Hey, I'm the Gamer, and welcome to Victoria 3, aka Vicky 3. This is from Paradox Development Studio, and it's not a new game. It's a game that has a new update. Update 1.6 has just gone live. I did this on the channel for quite some time when it first released. Now, for those of you who know me, you should know that I'm a huge Paradox Development Studio fan. In fact, it's my favorite game studio of all time. More of you are going to be familiar with something along the lines of Civilization as a series, and it describes itself as Grand Strategy. But anyone who has ever delved into the world of Paradox Development Studio know that Civilization is a baby strategy. It is an infant in the world of strategy gaming. Grand Strategy begins and does not end. There are others out there that do it, but not as well. But it begins with Paradox Development Studio. Now, Vicky 3 is the ultimate economic simulator of Grand Strategy games. The economy is the ultimate mode of what you are doing here, but just like any other Paradox Development Studio title of the Grand Strategy, strategy genre, which is most of their library, the real goal of a Paradox Development Studio game is to paint the map your color. We're going to be getting on with another playthrough of Vicky 3. Just one for now as we go through with this, uh, but I'm so happy to be bringing it back. I still go to, when I'm doing things off channel, I will still go on a very regular basis to whatever flavor of the month of Paradox Development Studio games for myself. One that I haven't done in a while that I'm that I miss that I'd like to bring back, reinstall, give it another shot. Stellaris haven't done that in a while. My regular go tos: Hoi Four, EU Four, Vicky Three, CK Three. Those are my main ghost go tos. Here's a Paradox Grand Strategy game in a nutshell. Deep, deep, layered content of these grand strategy, right? That's that's the grand of the strategy. There's so much depth. That translates into an enormous wealth of content. However, the model for Paradox is to get the nuts and bolts, get the mechanics, get the core of the game functioning in a way they want on release. But the, the depth which is already there and already evident and already pr present from day one, grows like a fungus and grows and grows and grows over the years. And we're at 1.6 now. 1.5 brought a lot of new content. But as for 1.6, let's let the ta trailer do the talking. 1.6 has arrived. With it, you'll find a slew of UI, UX, and performance improvements. Let's dive in. The Start Diplomatic Play pop-up has gotten an overhaul that should make it easier to get an idea of exactly how likely any country is to side with or against you. Country tooltips have gotten a complete rework to include better and contextual information. The country's detail panel has also been cleaned up a little bit to allow a more quick reference for important information. The diplomatic lens has been updated to now show ongoing packs, attitudes, relations, and rate of change. And diplomatic packs will now clearly state why they are breaking. The right side of your screen will now look a little different. Behold, the tabbed outliner. Customize it as you see fit to quickly reference the information most important to you. Additionally, the notifications are now color coded. Moving on, the pop browser has been renamed census data and is found here. Rich in pie charty goodness, you'll be able to delve down into your pops and find out exactly who's being a problem child. Sort by profession, or by location, or any number of different options to find the information you are looking for. Your scroll position is now saved between panels when moving back and forth, input good shortages are collected on a state by state level, and an upgrade all button has been added to your military tab to reduce clicks. Qualification notifications have seen a significant update in 1.6 over 1.5, whereas in 1.5 qualifications took 
all qualifications into account, even if it was a significant downgrade. For example, capitalists may be qualified to be a farmer, but chances are they won't take that leap. In 1.6, we now have something called employable qualifications, which is qualifications held by a pop that are reasonably able to take that job. Which means when you get a warning that there are not enough qualifications to fill a building, that warning can be reasonably trusted, and it'll be easier to find which professions are a bottleneck in your efforts. The construction interface has a new tab. Clicking between condensed and full will show you more detailed information about the construction capabilities and productivity in your states. The transfer units panel has gotten an update with the addition of the all and half buttons, allowing you to merge and split units easily. Additionally, you can sort your units by the state they come from. In case a particular state is low on manpower and you would like to send an army home for rest. The holy grail of Tooltip UX, which we call Tables and Tooltips, will be implemented in a limited form in 1.6. You'll only be able to find it in two places right now, but you will be seeing it more in the future. It allows us to display information with more clarity. Formations close to each other on the map will now stack into one box. Hovering or clicking on that box will then show further details. And you'll be able to find your infamy located in the top bar. The migration system tested in the 1.5 open beta is now officially implemented in the base game as of 1.6. The goal of the new system is to increase mid and late game performance by reducing the fragmentation of pops as the game progresses. An existing population in a given area will serve as a cultural community, serving as a lure to draw like-minded people to that area in future migrations. Additionally, the game will prioritize moving small, whole populations and merging them together before splitting larger ones during migrations. Information about migration is now easier to visualize, as it is displayed on a weekly rather than an annual basis. You will also be able to find several new map modes to show you information about migration. A number of fixes have been implemented into 1.6. For example, alliances will no longer break just because you can't call your allies into war. Frontline behavior and formation pathfinding has also seen an improvement. You can now station your formations in subject and allied HQs during wars and diplomatic plays. AI formation management has been improved to help fully cover fronts. The renowned playwright event now expires after five years, so no more stacking infinite prestige throughout the entire game. There's also been a number of fixes related to crashes, multiplayer stability, and out-of-sync issues. That's going to be it for all of the changes in 1.6. 1.5 brought huge changes to the military system, and the combination of that with the changes here in 1.6 have me pretty excited to play some more Vicky 3. That being said, let's play! The Ottoman Empire is an interesting choice. In EU4, they're the number one great power. They're the toughest nation, and they have the most going for them. But by 1836, the Ottoman Empire is on the verge of decline. Policies, state decisions, make things rather difficult to succeed with the Ottoman Empire. While it still has a, a good amount of strength, but not what it once did. It's already down to number seven and it's struggling in many ways. So we're gonna go ahead and try from an edge of Europe standpoint, kinda of locked within a lot of what's going on. I have yet to see a playthrough where the Ottoman Empire succeeds in this game. So we'll give it a go. <laughs> we have a negative event from day one. Uh, we have a good sized army with 162 battalions already. Like I said in 1.5, armies were very, uh, very much reworked, and you'll you'll see soon enough just how that functions. But uh, looking forward to the new tab based uh, outliner here. So let's see what this sick man of Europe is all about. Ottoman Empire is in a period of steady decline. If we do not reassert Ottoman sovereignty and reclaim our place among the powers of the world, we risk catastrophe. We have fallen, but we can rise again. In an auspicious incident, we deposed of Janissaries who had maintained their miserly grip on power for centuries, finally allowing reform to be possible. 
there is much more to do. First, of course, we need to replace the Janissaries with a truly modern military force. But in addition, we must restore the place of the sublime port as the very height of civilization. Education, urbanization, and sovereignty shall be the top items of the Ottoman agenda. Great reform is needed. We have six journal entries that are going to be added. We get a permanent minus 33%. 33% prestige. We get a permanent minus 25% bureaucracy, minus 25% taxation capa capacity, and we get a permanent plus 50% religious tax and a minus 40% conscriptable battalion. This will time out in 20 years. We have to complete four of those six journal entries. If it's completed, we get minus 33% prestige. If time runs out, we get minus 33% prestige, but we get two different events. One, reorganization. The other one, dead man of Europe, presumably making things significantly worse. We could be sick or we can be dead. There's going to be a lot to overcome. We may have some power and strength, but we completely lack power and strength. We've got a lot of modifiers working against us. This is not going to be easy. Having looked through the reforms that we need to target, and we only have 20 years, so we really don't have time. 20 years can go by pretty quickly in this game. Education reform and Army modernization are the first two to target. For the education reform, uh, we need to have a university level five occupied, like full strength uh, employed. That's not too hard to get. The hard part is going to be increasing the literacy rate of the people by 20% to a total of 20% or more. But by 20% means we need to bring it up to 31.6. That can take that can take a century easily to do. That's not going to be easy at all. We're, we're going to have to look pretty quickly into uh, some additional reforms beyond just having five universities. We're going to need a lot more than five universities. That's going to be a very early thing to do because, like I said, that can be quite challenging. Army modernization is the other one. Uh, we have to have at least 150 battalions, which we do have, but we're going to have to research Napoleonic warfare. So our first research task is that one. Uh, it's only going to take us 35 months to complete, but that's going to allow us to modernize uh, our military. And then we'll have to uh, evolve what we have away from a regular infantry and into having some organized training no input shortages so those are the first two targets with the research we've already addressed the first task but there's many first tasks before we can even unpause so let's get on with the additional ones the economy is rather tight right now so let's get in and do something about that with consumption taxes right now we have 975 authority this has to be used carefully grain pays the best yes spends 500 of that authority so is it really uh, the value we need it to be so you got to really pay attention to kind of what you're getting we're getting about two and a half k per hundred and that's what we need to assess is are we getting better than that this is 200k and just slightly like 2.1 so that's not great either tobacco is fantastic 5.75 per 100k that that's definitely uh, a higher mark than others 2.3 for services decent not good for the furniture definitely not good for the wood it's just over 1k per 100 fish is under luxury clothes luxury furniture are both approaching 2k per uh, but at two and a half grain definitely is providing the most so let's go ahead and bring that in and then let's see we were looking at just over two that's definitely over two for the uh, services 
So we'll go ahead and pick that one up and we've got 175 left for the highest 100, which is the luxury clothes. But that gives us a big boost to get the economy a jump start. But at the moment, we're not even doing any construction and that's immediately going to kick in as an expense. But speaking of kicking in, 14 construction is just not gonna be enough. We need to be as active as possible in the construction sector to build the economy to handle things like adding the universities that we're gonna need. So we need to do a lot of construction rapidly. We'll start by planning for uh, predicted total cost in construction goods. Well, we have to really get things moving to see just how much that 14 is gonna be for us. At the moment, it looks like it's only 5K. Uh, leaving us with a fairly healthy balance. So getting the game started, and yes, we do. We, we have a pretty healthy balance starting out. So that's a good start. Now, uh, military is definitely weak, but that doesn't mean it's non-existent. Our big target early is going to be Egypt. Egypt definitely have less battalions than we have, and they're weaker, but we have a truce with Greece, and with Egypt, and it's a three-year truce with Egypt before we're gonna be able to do anything with them. Moldavia, subject of ours, protectorate. Wallachia, also. Serbia, as well. Montenegro is incredibly small. They don't even have any units. They seem like a very easy target. Five infamy. Nobody will join in. Might as well. Let's go ahead and get that claimed. First diplomatic play, start painting that map a light green. They don't even have a unit, so this is gonna be a rather easy task, but there's their first unit called up. Let's go ahead and get our army prep. Uh, the rebuild of armies since this game first began, uh, you no longer build barracks to create units. You handle it on uh, each army menu. Commanders, are relevant to that. This has a high-ranking general, lieutenant general, who can handle 80 regiments. Right, right now, uh, this army has 22 regiments com contained within. 20 of them are line infantry. Two of them are cannon artillery. But as it's the smallest, uh, it's gonna be the cheapest to mobilize. So we'll go ahead and mobilize them. Move them to the front. It's going to take them nine days. You can see they are located in Anatolia. Uh, we have some in the Balkans, which might have been a little bit closer, but it's cheaper here. It's only nine days to travel. You can see they get there pretty quick. Okay, constr construction supplies are already going up. It's costing us, it looks like, about 7,000 uh, to have that single regiment active. And that was fast. <laughs> They beat up on that one unit so quickly that the battle was done in about a day. Negative events are kicking in and it feels like we're gonna be getting a lot of these with this man of Europe happening. So uh, we're gonna pick up some bonus infamy here, but we have got to satisfy these Sunni radicals in this. Uh, they are very likely to continue uh, pushing things along. This is also going to lead to a 20% Orthodox uh, Pops in Ankara becoming radical. Certainly not helpful, but we have got to uh, nip this in the bud. War score. You start each at a plus 100. It'll tick down to zero and then into the negatives. And at negative 100, uh, they will capitulate and will have won the war and claimed the rest of the state of Montenegro. Actually, it's still not all of the state. Austria has part of it, but it'll give us another chunk of the state. And other than a little infamy, it's not doing any harm for us, so it's a pretty easy grab. All right. We're done. Uh, we've also just finished uh, construction. We're up to 22 now from 14. That's, that's going to help us be a lot more active. Uh, checking the market we have a major shortage of clothing, tools, paper. But in terms of market price, hardwood has the biggest markup. Uh, small arms is a bit of an issue if we're gonna be 
modernizing the army, those small arms are going to be uh, hugely important and costly. So we might want to start with additional smart, small arms. We'll have one for now. Uh, paper is going to be important for bureaucracy. And while we have a positive balance, it's not great. But I think we can definitely afford to get the universities on the go. Uh, let's find who has the most job seekers that we can manage to employ. Five universities right off the bat here. Might not do them all initially. We might bump some other things ahead of it. But as we do have a positive balance, we might as well get on with it. Well, that first war is done. Uh, let's go ahead and let that infamy tick down a little bit. They have a truce with Greece. Uh, we do have the Ionian Islands here. They only have a single unit, uh, but protectorate of Great Britain. So we don't want to mess with that one. Jabal Shamar. They only have one unit. They have nothing going on there. There's your easy next target. Conquer State. 3.4 infamy is all. Let's do it. Looks like nobody's interested. Uh, we'll use that same unit to mobilize. It's going to take them a little bit longer to get here, so let's go ahead and get them mobilized early 23 days to reach. And the infamy is still just 7. Even after that, even with a mobile army, still a positive balance. Building up some reserves. We've got about 2 million in reserves here early on. It's a good amount, especially when we are still building a positive balance for now, so we could actually almost afford to uh, improve the construction even further. It's not a bad idea to kind of use your initial positive balance entirely on expanding construction, because then you can expand the economy from there with a neutral balance and build it into a positive balance rather quickly. The faster you can construct things, the better. Uh, you can see that our initial the front line stays the same, but we initially grab territory a bit at a time, and it'll fully conquer a territory, and that's when it moves the front line. And you don't get credit for the territory until you have it in its entirety. Halfway through that first tech grab for Napoleonic warfare to modernize the army, and there you go. We just added that additional state. Now, as for Montenegro, we already have the state. We just added to it. It's already uh, incorporated, but the new state, Hale here, is an unincorporated state. Uh, turmoil's rather low, that's good, and it's going to be fairly cheap to incorporate. It's going to take us five years to add that properly into the Ottoman Empire, even if it once, once upon a time would have been part of the Ottoman Empire. Not a bad start here, but we've got to complete four journal entries to have that uh, reorganization event going. A lot still to do. Now, we do have one army here where our commander, his command limit is 36, but there's 57 units. We can either redistribute those units, we can promote the general, or we can hire an additional general. He is reckless, which hurts the recovery rate of the unit. Defensive strate strategist is good, and popular commander just adds to that command limit. That's why it's 36 instead of 30. But I don't like reckless. So instead of giving him more strength, let's go ahead and give an additional commander. You have three choices for that. And which uh, party or interest group they represent uh, that's going to be an important factor because they are, they are going to give a boost. And the intelligentsia is the best one. The local governors are the worst one. We want to get them out of power sooner rather than later. And we want to boost the intelligentsia as one seeks change. One likes to keep everything the same. And we need reforms to progress. Surveyor, definitely good and tactful. Morale damage. That's to the enemy, right? Defense is good for us. Careful maneuver. Yeah. Let's get him hired. And that gives us a boost. That's now all of the enemies with enough commanders. 
uh, establish a university, and so we've completed the first one there. University throughput is definitely helpful helpful for us right now, so we'll take that. It'll help us research tech faster. Our rate is normally a 50. It's already a 55. And we're just getting started on, you know, building universities. Uh, but it's also going to help us improve our literacy rate. Started at 11.1. .1. We're already up over 1%. But we're going to have to go a lot faster than that if we're going to complete this in 20 years. We need at least 2% per year to get the job done within 20 years. Greece. Oh, they are weak. Okay, but do they have friends? No, they do not. But we have a truce. A truce that's over. The truce is done. The infamy is cleared. So, uh, where to take? Attica is the first state that we would want to claim. It is going to come with some infamy, but we can keep that rather low if we take one state at a time. It looks like uh, the Ionian Islands would join them, but they only have two units. Easy enough. Easy enough. Uh, starting the diplomatic play. We'll wait and see what they have, but this unit of 31 should be able to handle their minimal forces rather easy. Yeah, that's a pretty significant advantage. Okay. Right now, they don't even have that support, the expected support. But there's that first tech done. That's going to be a big upgrade for us. We're going to get better military units here in a moment. We're going to figure out our next research. Um, as part of army modernization, we're going to need to get away from the organized training. That's another military upgrade. So if we look at the barracks, there's the no organized training. So we have to remove that. Which means we need general training. General training requires general staff as a research. So general staff. That's here. So we're going to have to go through army reserves, which is already partially done, so that's good. And that'll take us to general staff. That's going to be, I think, the last big key that we need. Input goods shortages. So we'll have to make sure all of our goods are taken care of. Uh, improving those armies will come with consequences. You can see already, like, artillery is short right now. We've already added one to the small arms to help there, but artillery is hurting. So we'll add one here as well. That looks like it's not even fully employed. That one's not fully employed. No wonder they are having issues. So we'll put that one in Ankara. Let's take care of this battle before we worry about changing over our units. Eesh. Negative event, the religious tax. This is, I think, part of that sick man of Europe. Well, we don't need the conscriptable battalions, so that's okay. We have no conscripts as it is. We have a regular army, so we'll, we'll just live without conscripts. Uh, the, oh, it's too late to add. I only had that unpaused for a few moments. Dang. Well, that's okay. The, the good thing here is we don't add any infamy. We're going to take one state for now. We'll have a peace treaty, and that's fine. That is totally fine. We don't want our infamy getting too high. And if I only take the one state that friend who was leaning towards joining them doesn't join. Battle is very much going our way. They have a little bit of, of defense. Our offense not upgraded yet. So you can see we've claimed... Oh, we've claimed the first state. 
but we're going two different directions here. Uh, not helpful. Go ahead and mobilize and open that second front. There we go. That way they don't retake. So it'll allow us to overwhelm them that much faster. It just costs more. But as we already hold the war goal, uh, they're already ticking below zero. This war will be done rather soon. Building the economy quick. It was, I think both of these were about 11.1 .1 at the start. I know this was 11 flat or something along those lines, or 10.9. But there you go. There's one additional state. It's a state we did not hold prior. And we hold the entirety of it now, I believe. Is that still, yeah, that's Ionian Islands. So there you go. So we just weakened Greece further. Okay, Army Reserves is done. That was the one we needed along the way. So now it's General Staff. It's going to take three years to complete. Uh, we've boosted. Generally, you get plus two for each university. Five universities from an initial weekly innovation of 50 is now 60. That's still not going to be enough to get us very far. It's helping move us up faster when it comes to the literacy rate. And it's helping us uh, with tech improving quicker, but only marginally. I mean, that's so far a 20% increase is all. Wow, another double negative here. This time it's with Russia and Ankara, the Orthodox. Not happy. Just four months left on our truce with Egypt. But they've got 100 units, 2,200. We're only slightly stronger than them. However, we did just finish our, our upgrades. Not for this one, but here. So right now, we have irregular infantry, which is plus 10 offense, plus 10 defense. Morale loss is at plus 15. Uh, but if we were to upgrade to line infantry, line infantry has plus 20 offense, plus 25 defense, just a plus 10 on morale loss. But they're going to cost small arms. So we, we are going to have to start supplying small arms. Let's get our first 25 irregular infantry units upgraded and see what that does. Cannon artillery also, but we've already put in for... Well, it looks like it's not done yet. Artillery. Let's get that upgraded. We'll see where we're at here shortly. The army modernization. 75% of our units are irregular uh, infantry right now. Eesh. Okay, do a promotion. Our forces will be happy. Or we make the intelligentsia happy. Intelligentsia? That's... That's my approach. Always boost the intelligentsia whenever possible. Keep it away from the rural folk, if possible. 10% chance that they're going to be an alcoholic. And we just added a random unit. This was under... This was already decided from one of the, uh, the others. We'll move over to another force. That was either from Attica or Montenegro. Okay, well this is good. Now we're working on the artillery foundry. That was a quarter of our forces that we just upgraded. So we're now at 50%. And no sign of shortage on uh, small arms at the moment. This one is entirely, wow, all 45 units. Let's get them upgraded. You can see just how quickly it transitions over. It's going to cost us more, though. Having a larger unit, and we don't have much of a positive balance. But we haven't really done anything to build the economy just yet. We are down to 25%, which is we need to be below 25%. And 
we might as well just finish the job. Small arms is now short-handed, though. We do not have enough small arms. So we'll go ahead and upgrade the rest here. Okay, we do now have a negative balance. We need more small arms, so let's go ahead and get that queued. You don't just construct a building and then suddenly get all of its benefits. Right now, there's 15 people employed. <laughs> and it's literally just starting out. And it's only just beginning to produce. It's not even one. It's a partial. So we're getting you know the smallest amount of something on the go. And it takes a little bit. There's no cash reserves. There's no money to work with. So its production is at you know virtually nothing and it's going to take a little bit for them to get the hardwood and the iron and enough employees to start actually producing artillery and seeing this number climb right now the local balance is 0.06 it's not doing terribly well but it's starting to with its small number of employees do something now later on you have options to like subsidize they can hire really quick and get up to speed very quickly with that with them being subsidized and then you risk losing all that as you turn it away right now it's not costing us too much money but the weekly revenue versus the expenses it's almost offsetting itself but the problem is you're not getting cash reserves as a result Ooh, big fan of colonization it's a good way to paint the map we'll finish that soon hopefully that takes off a little bit faster because so far the artillery's not even up to a one yet even though there's a clear demand for it getting a lot of negatives from our interest groups not happy with the rural fo folk right now we get a minus 10 percent to technology spread because they're stuck in the old ways for the intelligentsia minus 15 percent to assimilation for the arms armed forces plus 15 percent to military goods cost Nobody's really happy right now. Sunni Alema have a slight positive, so there's just nothing good or bad happening. We are getting a boost in 20% influence, something really unimportant, as we haven't even ha had to use it at all yet. Uh, but with the small arms done, that's taken care of that. We're back to a positive balance, and we're starting to fund these forces. Check it back in on the market on what the big demands are. We need man of wars. We still need their artillery. We've built that one. It's just not picking up. But hardwood, that's an easy one to uh, address right now, that and the man of wars. The military shipyard, we have just the one. Let's go ahead and get a second one built. And we are producing, let's see, they aren't able to employ everyone, so we definitely don't want to expand in Bulgaria. But it looks like Northern Thrace, they're producing hardwood and they can afford to expand. So we'll add a couple there, get something going on that economy because we really have not done much with it yet. Egypt, 2,600. We're at 35 down. We're, we're up by 1,000 over them. That's, that's interesting. Uh, do we have any other upgrades to make? Let's make the other upgrades. We only have a, a small advantage over Egypt right now, and I really like that to be a little bit more. Okay, demands for small arms just went up again, and artillery, and that man of wars. But the small arms factory was just done, and yeah, it just dropped out below that mark. Ooh, that cost us something fierce, though, right? Okay, hail is starting to uh, produce a little bit more, but they, they can't seem to get anybody hired. Did I, is that not a good location? Do we not have... There's no people. There's no job seekers in Hale. I didn't build that one. That was done automatically on its own. No wonder we cannot get this taken care of. We'll, we'll take a place that uh, actually has room for people. And then 
small arms still in demand so let's go ahead and get another one and we're already taking care of the man of wars you offset those negatives and the cost drops supply and demand is huge on how this game functions take care of the supply and demand and all of a sudden this balance just writes itself uh, we do have over 100 authority right now this would help us go ahead and tax liquor cuts into that a little bit not so bad we've got two million gold reserves we upgraded the military and just took a huge huge hit here especially when it found out that there were shortages so we've taken care of one piece of that army modernization but we need to take care of the input goods shortages and the tech part looks like we're two-thirds of the way through what we need to get that last step there you go we're seeing improvements here <laughs> whispers of insurrection oh boy it's back again and it's russia it's a pretty harsh event that we're just getting continually I'd like to begin this war. The infamy is almost gone. We've almost clear, cleared that up. I'd love to start this war with Egypt before they get much stronger, because they are, like us, getting stronger. But we're over a thousand ahead of them in terms of strength. We just have a real shortage in cash, and that's just mostly now because we have a shortage in small arms. If we can uh, resolve that and drop this price by about half, We'll have a positive balance and we can afford to raise our armies to take war to Egypt. Looks like paper paper's in high demand right now too, so there's something about that. Oh the turmoil is worse here than it was. Radical pops. Right, we're getting those negative events that's increasing the radical pops. On the education reform side, we've Eclipse the 2% mark. We're at 2.3 now. We've gained about 1 million in our GDP. It's number 10 in the world. Uh, but we are way behind on standard of living. Population staying pretty steady. Usually early in the game it lowers. And then as you develop technologies, as you improve standard of living situations, that population will climb. And then eventually it starts to climb pretty rapidly no market shortages much better and that price is starting to come down it's already come down by 13. and that's definitely taken a bite out of this i think we need to look now at egypt nothing speaking of look at egypt what do we need to do let's reclaim syria Six states. Six. We can try to do this in one go or give it a couple goes. I suppose it'll depend on the infamy, but our infamy is cleared up. And there's general staff. That's what we needed on the army modernization. We might be able to finish this sick man of Europe first journal entry here in just a second. Let's see what happens. That's what we just unlocked. General training. It's only going to cost us 700 to do it. There you go. That's about army modernization completed. Uh, we don't even get a positive event for that. We just have one of four. And we're down to 12 years. It's taken us eight years to get the first one done. Might need to be aggressive and try to go for all six of these. Got a lot of societal things that just aren't here um, that can really help us strengthen our economy sooner rather than later so we're going to put in for those Lebanon Transjordan Palestine so we need this area here we do not need the Sinai Peninsula at this time but we need those six and there's probably going to be a fair amount of infamy to take them with 12 years to go, this might be a two-part project. Right? Maybe we take half now and half uh, 
when truce expires to split up the infamy a little bit, but that'll depend on the amount, the amount of infamy. So Adana would be kind of the first one on the list, uh, but how we look, we're plus a thousand, plus a thousand on them. That's, that's a good third stronger than they. Ooh, return state, point one infamy. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Looks like nobody wants to join. We're only looking at the UK, Russia, and France that would have any interest. Uh, Great Britain, you got to worry about because they, well, they don't like either of us. The others, not so severe. Which one's which, by the way? Egypt <laughs> is the three crescent moons. We're the one crescent moon. All right, so return state demanded presume we're gonna have a fight on our hands here we still do not have a great balance we only have 1.8 million we don't want this war to go on terribly long <laughs> uh, could be problematic but we have got to strike while the iron's hot meaning we have got to strike while our military is a thousand points stronger than theirs We want to put most of our forces on this western front. Okay, reasserting our authority in Syria. Egypt sees most of our Levantine provinces in 1833. So just 10 years ago, just a few years prior to the start date. After its governor tried and failed to overthrow the entire imperial government. Time to reclaim the lands we lost in that war is long overdue. However, th this is likely to draw the attention of any great powers in Europe. We must see to it that they are on our side. I think this is the obvious direction to go. Egypt gets the Turkish incursion event, but we will improve relations with four great powers and they'll be offered an active interest in the region. We're gonna lose some influence, but I don't care about the losing influence. Uh, this seems like the obvious way to go with this one and here comes the the huge huge losses uh, begin and the demand suddenly went up as we activated all the forces you need more of it when you're active on the front so we have a strong strong advantage on our primary front but that's where our objectives are we definitely have the numerical advantage and then we're just coming in on this front that isn't gonna be as big of a deal if we could just kind of hold them up if you sweep through here you win the war pretty quick but speaking of right now there's no infamy we need a lot more than just adana uh, return states and there's the others and look at that the infamy is nothing so we're gonna go for return states and put them all in right here right now There you go. That is all six. Uh, we still have 28 maneuvers remaining, but I don't want to go crazy with this. Uh, maybe just like war reparations. Okay. And then is there a subject to transfer? Uh, we'll leave it at that. Just the war reparations. We're coming in with a specific goal in mind and especially trying to get out of this sick man of Europe. But this is very little infamy. How we looking though on the sway countries, Great Britain, want to join on our side? Well, that makes that easy if they do. Let's give it a little time and see. If Russia drops out of this thing, we know that Great Britain will stay out of this and we do have enough of an advantage. I think we can pretty well take control of this fairly quickly. I'm just curious what we could do. Sway with tr uh, transfer subjects. They want us to transfer a subject. Okay. Uh, yeah, not not a fan of that. If it was obligations or, you know, a war goal, they could take a state. Not those six, but take another state themselves. But no. And we're passed. Okay. It's on. It is on. War is a coming. So within the new war model, you have each successive front. It's it's a lot easier to manage than it was before. 
Um, our goals are pretty clear. They want to conquer Hale and Kara and the Ottoman Adana. You can see just how strong we are here. And like I said, this one, it's not a big deal if you slowly lose ground here. We're up to 70% on this one. So yeah, we're, we're looking pretty strong at this point. Uh, pretty easy to take territory. Problem though, is that it's such a huge front and you know the territory being what it is, it's gonna be hard to uh, progress rather rapidly. But at 84%, it's not looking that hard. 91%, yeah, they're down to under 5K troops in there. It's gonna start moving that front along pretty quick. You can see we've got parts of territories. We are losing some ground there. It's not looking perfect, but not too worried about it. Uh, I suppose we should set ourselves up defensively. We're going to deploy to C node and take control of what they have there. 3319, we should have an advantage on this. Maybe not. No, yes. We're on the right. It does that a lot. It switches you back and forth. Hard to tell the difference. Okay, we are moving the front. We've already moved two territories there, two states. And we control two of our six targets. They are about to move this front, though. They're pretty close to, to uh, taking Libya. And now hold Libya. You should... Why? Okay, already beating a boy. You're just taking a moment to get there. Gotta at least slow them up. Okay, progressing quickly. We've already taken a third state. About to take a fourth state. We've got it. Last two states to hold. We're well ahead on war score. Things are looking pretty good. We don't even have the market shortage right now. We just have a big negative because of uh, all of our armies being deployed right now, mobilized. We're definitely losing ground here, but it's not a big deal. It's just our subject. They should not be able to uh, piece out separately. Right now in the head-to-head, -head, casualties are about the same. The cost of the war is a little bit higher for us. A lot of that comes down to that plus one, uh, plus 1,000, which is getting the job done. And yes, they are starting to tick into the negative. We hold all six states. They'll get to that minus 100 fairly soon. We'll continue progressing here. It looks, oh, see, they're not even, they've given up here. Now they're trying to, uh, they've just transferred all of their forces. We'll regain the initiative soon. It's just they, they're so beat up. It's taken them a minute to uh, start pushing back. Oh, they've transferred a small army over there. It's an army we'll still have an advantage over. There you go. There's that regaining of territory beginning. In fact, we've just trapped... Did we just trap that army? This will be over in a moment. This is a big success. And this will be two. Two of four. We had 20 years to do it. And it looks like we're going to do it in just shy of 10 years to be halfway through our project. The military part of the project will be uh, what is complete. We'll need the education reform plus one more. As for the, there it is. We got it. Capitulation. We have our six states back and the war reparations for some time. That is fantastic. Look at that. Getting bigger, getting stronger. Beating up on Egypt. Love it. Okay. We're weak. We have our issues. But we also still have some elements of strength. Halfway done. Just under halfway there. I'm liking that. Education reform is an obvious choice, but hard, right? We're, we're almost at 3% now. We're almost halfway there. I'm not sure how well we're going to necessarily do with that goal of trying to get 20%. Uh, reclaim Egypt. Well, okay. It gave us a further goal. Uh, suppress separatism. Here's another one. So this is one where we need 15 years of having no secession movement. We've had no secession movement so far. It's going to get harder if you start claiming territory and territory uh, situation. But another five and a half, six years without a separatist movement, that'll give us a third. 
and then we could reclaim Egypt four more it's like the next four Sinai lower Egypt upper uh, middle and was it upper that they wanted for the other yes take those next four states away from Egypt and you're completing another one we might not might not even need the education reform the urbanization is really hard that takes well over a century so i'm not sure how we would get that one done uh, we do have a bureaucratic reform uh, we would need hereditary bu bureaucrats or land-based taxation but as long as as long as the local governors are in charge like it's really difficult to change from hereditary to appointed bureaucrats because they don't like it the ones in charge and those who do like it they're not in charge so it's it's a pretty difficult thing to do without even without having like a civil war on your hands so choices in what direction to go forward but we might just get through this thing uh, also with all that territory we just picked up we picked up six more units uh, we will want to probably redistribute those four armies is good for now big success and at least for this fraction of a second we're, while we're paused, we have a positive balance with all those units uh, being demobilized, returned to the home. And we've already covered off the infamy, by the way, uh, as that was all returning states that were once ours. That is going to do it for this first episode here of this Let's Play. Uh, we've got a timeline to play through, and we've got a little shy of 100 years to do it. It's a 100-year game, and we're what eight years in plenty of time to go um it'll only be a handful of episodes but it should be a fun one so hopefully you'll stick with me for that and please do me a quick favor help me get this out there because this game did not just launch it's an update it's been out for well over a year now about a year and a half almost so it's it's going to take an algorithm boost to even have this be noticed by anyone other than returning uh, audience so please help me out. Click that like button, leave a comment to help with the algorithm, and it'll work wonders to uh, to help this series. I will complete this series though, one way or another, because I'm going to play it. I just hope that some of you will <laughs> be along for the journey with me. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.